So I'm going to suggest today that we play a game. Everything today, no matter where you go, is about gamification. So why not apply some of that approach to how to figure out Tesla's future sales, earnings, product line, and so forth? Then we can use that same approach, gamification, to also figure out the future possible stock valuation. And all this by playing a game. And besides that, you'll get an MBA level understanding of some of how all of this works. Maybe you never wanted that MBA level understanding, but stick with me. Maybe you'll find it entertaining. Hey, this is Randy Kirk. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit notify. Uh, we've got the regular program coming up tonight. Probably some kind of a program in the middle of the day, but tonight will be the regular Monday morning show where we talk about what's popping next week, what's going to be happening all next week. And later on in the show, we will talk for a minute or two. At the very end, we'll talk about, you know what, because we just had another record day. We even had one gentleman buy six. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. Okay, my entire career has been product driven. That doesn't mean that I haven't also done services. In fact, for the past 15 years, I've made my primary income from helping small companies get bigger through marketing employ and employing best business practices. So while I know the side of the fence about um, services, I'm mostly about product. The result is that I have years and years of experience making product decisions. The go, the go no go decision, to how to improve products, how to set pricing, how to create an advertising campaign, how to develop new distribution channels or make decisions about new distribution channels, how to export, how to import, how to do sourcing. The list is very, very long. But the main decision is the very first time the idea comes to the table. That might be my own invention. Maybe I've thought of something overnight. And I'm like, oh my gosh, here's a great idea. Maybe it's somebody on the staff. Maybe it's some other business that's presenting an idea, a new product. Maybe it's an inventor with a great new idea. We had a stream of inventors coming to our company because they knew that we would look at all these new inventions. It was so much fun to see what people were coming up with, especially in the bicycle business. You can imagine there's a lot of garage inventors out there in the bicycle business. Okay, so how in the world did I make decisions without even going to step, how, even making the decision about whether or not to go to uh, part B? In other words, is this something to even spend time deciding whether or not it's a possible product? I mean, you have to look at things like, can you make the thing or purchase the thing inexpensively enough so that you can sell it for at least five times the landed cost in order to uh, you know, make it the normal margins of profit and cover all the distribution costs through the distribution channels? I mean, even now when you're selling direct on Amazon, you have to make five, for most products, you have to make five times your landed cost in order to make a living on Amazon. So those are the kind of things you have to decide. Are you selling into a distribution channel you're familiar with or will you need a new distribution channel? If you're not familiar with the distribution channel, are you gonna to have to come up with an entirely new marketing approach? Are you gonna to have to hire salespeople for that? You're starting to get the idea. It's a very complicated thing to decide about putting in a new product. Well, sometimes I made those decisions based on a lot of gut, because once you've done it and done it and done it, you can go, no, you know what, that's been done before, or no, no, that's, there's no way we can make that cheap enough in order for people to be able to want to buy it uh, at the price we'd have to sell it for. Um, sometimes there's overwhelming evidence, either negatively or positively. I've had products presented where I knew, uh, as soon as I saw it, it was hard to keep the big grin from appearing on my face <laughs> because you know you don't want to you don't want to let the person know that you're that excited because you know then they're going to charge you more anyway so this is where the game comes in the game is probabilities okay some would say gambling but gambling is generally less to do with knowledge or skills and more to do with dumb luck obviously sometimes there's plenty of skill involved in gambling um, and lots of understanding involved in terms of the uh, you know, let's say when you're playing um, uh, uh, Texas Hold'em or whatever, you you know, understanding how to find out the tells on the other players in the room, et cetera. So there can be a lot of, of uh, knowledge and skill involved. The more knowledge and skill involved, the more that I can have an advantage over my competitor because I know more than he does, then that's the more likely I'm going to be interested. 
So now let's say you have 10 companies that you want to invest in. Which one of those do you have the most knowledge about that you consider to be better than others who might be investing? Like the street, for instance, which we know with regard to Tesla, the street seems to be completely dumb when it comes to analyzing electric vehicles, much less energy storage, et cetera. Which companies do you have some kind of skill based on a not just a skill of understanding their industry, but what about the skill where you've watched the company for a long time, you've got, you've watched their earnings calls, you've watched the methods that they use, you've watched how the management handles different circumstances, and you've watched the stock go up and down over the years. You know what the delta is and what the beta is, et cetera, et cetera. So the more you know about those kind of things, then again, the more likely it is to be something that you want to get involved in and you have the a better ability to put percentages on your future plays. So that's when we get into the next part of it. Now, let's say you've got a company like Tesla that has many, many products in the pipeline. Some that are uh, very, very uh, mature at this point, like the Model Y or the Model 3. Others that are, you know, just breaking, um, you know, uh, uh, like the well, some some that are half half products like the FSD, which is an unusual situation. Other products that maybe aren't doing so great, like solar. So you've got these products in different levels of of uh, uh, success, and or how far have they been rolled out so far? And so you have to make some decisions with regard to where you're going to spend your bandwidth, and where you're going to spend your money, and where you're going to want to develop because what. You, you can't spend all, you, there's not enough money and not enough bandwidth to do everything that you want to do at any given time. So you're looking at things like the sales and profits of the existing products that you already have, the existing supply channels, the existing distribution channels. What's your working marketing approach? Is it working? Is it something that you can apply to the next product or to another product that you're that's well along? Let's say for instance, how will the robots, if, you, if you're talking about Optimus, are there any similarities in terms of, of supply lines or similarities in terms of the distribution channels and in terms of the customer, et cetera, et cetera, to make it easier to bring that product into uh, your existing company? So we got uh, years ago, we got in, in, involved in little girls dress up clothes and also uh, Halloween costumes. And you think, boy, what does that have to do with the bicycle business? Well, it turns out that the buyers at Target and Sears, et cetera, companies, some companies like, like Sears and Kmart are no longer there, but Walmart, um, the buyers who bought the bicycles were the same buyers who bought those Halloween costumes and little girls dress up uh, clothes. So the distribution channel was the same, same salespeople, same uh, purchasing agents. So anyway, those are lots of the kinds of decisions you make along the way. So the same thing ha happens now. Should I add more to my stake here in a company where I already have an understanding or take a greater risk with something that I know less about? But maybe I'd like to add to my knowledge base or maybe I'm really excited about the products that I've seen or the services that I've seen that they're doing. Maybe I'm really excited about their leadership. Maybe I'm excited about their vision. So do I want to now split off some of my money and and spend some, not all of it on Tesla and a little bit over here because I'm excited about that or because I have some knowledge about that or because I want some knowledge about that. So these are decisions you're making and you're making them logically as opposed to just, oh, George said that it was probably looks like a good deal. All right. So now the final piece of the puzzle. As I'm evaluating at a company like Tesla, how can I project their future sales and earnings? I need to take the company product line by product line. I need to figure out the likelihood, the percentage the, the you know of success and the degree of success in each product line. And some of you have seen me do this, and I'll be doing some more of it in the coming weeks, maybe next week. I think next week is going to be heavily involved in this Isaacson book, um, Walter Isaacson's new book about Elon. I think we'll be spending a lot of time on that. I may not be able to get to the numbers next week. All right. So, but let's use energy as an existing product. What are the odds in your line? Write it down, get a piece of paper or put it on your computer or whatever. What are your the odds in your mind that Tesla can build this division profitably far into the future? 100%, 80%, 50%, 10%. So do you think they're going to continue to build this product line? Or do you think they're going to stick with just the, the, the Lathrop and Shanghai factories? That'll be it. 
if they if they're going to build any more it's just going to be really hard and they're not likely to do it so pick a number is it 100 percent that they're going to grow it and grow it profitably into the future you know what are the competitors you know are there's likelihood of competitors what are going to be the profit issues what are the supply line issues what are the the uh, limiting limiting factors all right now what are the odds that they will build it out quickly what are the barriers to fast growth what is the potential tam can is there enough tam to be able to see them growing at 100 percent a year like elon has said they want to do they have the necessary bandwidth to build the factories maintain the supply lines keep their ear to ground on developments in the business both on the purchasing side and on the selling side field some kind of reps that can go out there and talk to the industry and 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 maintain a relationship with the people that are buying these kinds of things provide the marketing effort etc and build the business at that 100 percent a year because Elon has said he wants to build it faster than auto, which is 50% a year. So do you think they'll build it at 100% a year? What are the odds of that? Are the odds 100%? You're like, duh, they're going to build it 100% a year at least. Or do you think, yeah, maybe it's 50% that they're going to build it at 100% a year. Or maybe you think it's 100%, but that they'll build it at around 50% a year. So you add those in and those just become multiplication issues. And we'll talk about that in a second. So you get... Now you make a judgment about the value going forward. If you're 100% sure that they will sell 20 billion worth of storage in 2024 at 25% margins, then you can easily put that in your valuation. You can just multiply it out. 20 billion, 25% margins, $5 billion in profits. Okay, and, and again, you might have to take something off for overhead or not. You can make that decision yourself. And if there's a 50, and then if you think, that there's a 50% chance that they'll double that in 2025, then only put in half the additional amount or 25% of only 10 billion, the additional amount plus the existing 20 billion. So you begin to see where I'm going with this. You can just use these percentages of your expectations of the reality of these things as a way to judge what the stock might be worth in a year or two years or three years. If you think on the other hand, that it's like almost 100% positive that they're gonna have both Shanghai and Lathrop up by the end of 2025, then it's easy enough to say, okay, they'll have 10 billion in profits from that. All right, I think you're beginning to get the point. If you're not, I want you to say that in the comments below. Randy, I lost you right here. <laughs> or Randy, I don't get what you're saying. Or Randy, I think you're wrong. All right, now, what about a product that doesn't exist yet? FSD, FSD fully out, Robo Taxi, Optimus, Dojo as a service. All right, so let's take Optimus, my favorite product of all, and of course, the product that will completely change everything with regard to Tesla. Do you think that there's a 100% chance that Optimus will be a product someday? Okay, someday, uh, 25 years from now. Do you think, even if they work on it for 25 years, do you think that they can make Optimus do something useful to where they would be able to rent it out for some amount of money more than it costs them to build it? Uh, do you think it's a 90% chance or a 50% chance that it will be someday there will be a working Optimus that does useful things? Now, remember, Elon said he's going to be building these starting in November. All right. Anyway, <laughs> or if you think there's a 50%. Now, when do you think, this is the next, next question for you, when do you think there's a 50% chance that it will be selling or renting a million units a million units or 500,000 units when do you think that's maybe it'll be when do you think there's a 50 percent chance that they'll be selling 500,000 units or when do you think there's a 50 percent chance they'll be selling 10 million units do you think that maybe they would sell 500,000 in two years do you think they'll sell a million in two years 50 percent chance 100 percent chance so pick the date by when you know I'm pretty sure so, you know, for Randy, it might be, oh, I think there's a 100% chance or 95%, 90% chance they will sell a million units in 2025. But you might think, no, there's more like a 50% chance they'll sell 500,000 units in 2025. Do you see my, okay, you starting to get it here? All right, pick your percentage chance, your date, your total units. Now give your base, bear, and bull case on the selling or renting price and the costs. So I'm going to use, well, let, let me just go through this. Okay, so I think, let's say, there's a 90% chance Tesla will rent 1 million Optimi in 2025 at a base case $50,000 per 
net profit of rent. Okay. That would be $50 billion in profit. My bull case is they'll get $75,000 per unit of rent net profit after all overhead and all the expenses of getting it, you know, socialized and all any all the things we've talked about a million times. My bear case would be twenty-five thousand dollars. Certainly, they're going to be able to get at least twenty-five thousand per year of profit. So anywhere from twenty-five billion in profit to seventy-five billion in profit, with a ninety percent likelihood, or ninety percent of those numbers, which would be twenty-two point five billion to sixty-seven point five billion. So that becomes my range, my bear to my bull case. And in the middle, you'd be around forty-five billion. Well, maybe I only think there's a twenty percent chance. So now my range would be five billion to fifteen billion. Now, I'm talking about optimists. Now, I'm also talking about this method of doing things. Can you imagine? My, I only think there's a twenty percent chance that they'll sell a million of these in 2024 and 2025. I think there's a twenty percent chance, and I think that it might be as low as five billion dollars of of. Uh, of earnings in that year, Apple's total profit per year is 100 billion. Okay, anyway, moving on. And now, now I know, now, I know for a fact that investment analysts do these kind of games. So it is amazing to me that with Elon saying they're going to start building, building bots in November, and these kind of numbers are even remotely possible. How is it the value of Optimus loan right now isn't it at least $100 billion? and probably a whole lot more. Because if Tesla can fill 1 million bots in 2025 and only do the same in 2026, the number doubles. But if I do the game, I think there's a high percentage chance that they can make a lot more than 1 million units in the second year of production. So now do the same game with FSD or robo-taxis, and now you begin to see why Kathy Woods and others have such high predicted stock prices on Tesla. Now, let me know in the comments below if this made any sense or where I did something wrong or where I need to do a better job of explaining this methodology of making the decision, making decisions with regard to what stock you buy, with, with regard to what product the company sells, with regard to how much, where, where they put their emphasis. Like right now, Tesla's emphasis is obviously on the cars and on energy storage. And I'm guessing there's a lot of emphasis on Dojo. I think there's a lot of emphasis on um, uh, uh, on uh, obviously the Cybertruck, um, but less emphasis apparently on semi-truck and maybe less emphasis on solar. So you, you begin to get what's going on here. All right, time to talk about whether or not you drank beer out of a bottle. <laughs> okay, I know, change up. What about your best friend? What about your neighbor? What about your sister? You know, anybody that drinks beer out of a bottle? Well, guess what? They be shocked, thrilled, and excited. You don't even have to wait for Christmas. You don't have to wait for their birthday. Do it now. Get them one of these. I just mentioned, fella just ordered, I don't want to mention his name because I didn't ask permission. He ordered six of these things. Now, you know he's not going to, well, maybe. He might be putting one of these in his inside fridge. He might be putting one of these outside in the recreation center in the backyard. He might have one for the cabin. He might have one for the RV. He might have one for the boat. Let's see, where else might he have one? Oh, in the cooler, just so you can take it wherever you go. Anyway, um, he just ordered six. Um, uh, the orders are just great. I mean, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Even if you're not doing it to support the channel and you're just doing it because, oh my gosh, it's the coolest, fun little thing you've ever seen. Now, remember, it comes in this gorgeous gift box. So that's, again, I'm sure those were some of those six were gifts. Um, I, I don't know how to open the gift box, but there you go. So it's like one of those magnetic boxes. You open it up. There's the, the camo version. You know, these are cool. I mean, they're the same thickness as the Tesla uh, Cybertruck. Okay. Same gauge, exactly same gauge, same stainless steel. Um, they're refrigerator magnet, of course, uh, or a magnet. I mean, magnet for any place that's mag magnetizable. Okay. So let me go through the numbers again for you here. These are, this is, see, this is a product when I saw it. I didn't have to think. I was like, no, this is going to sell like hotcakes because everybody that drinks cold beer out of a bottle is going to want one of these. All right. So they're $25. Probably going to have to raise that price because uh, I think it's going to be, uh, I think I think they're worth more. Anyway, but right here, 
on the, when you buy it directly from me through PayPal, it's always going to be $25 unless something crazy happens. When I sell them on Amazon and I will be selling them personally, I will be selling them on Amazon. I might go to $29. I haven't quite decided. All right. So you want to buy two of them? Great. It's $50. You want to get one for free? Join Patreon at the $10 level and you'll get one for free. You can still get one of the books. Okay, those two plus the other two, you can pick from those books. At the $10 level, you get two for free. At the $5 level, you get one for free. So you can do that as well. Now, that's not in addition. You can do one or the other. Now, if you decide that you want the books, let's say, let's say you join at the $10 level and you want two books. And now let's say that you also want a one of these cyber trucks. Well, I've made a deal with a couple of people because they've wanted that. And I said, look, I'll give you the cyber truck for just $20. Okay. Um, and again, multiples, you can buy 10 of them if you want $20 each. If you're outside the country, you need to uh, pop in another 20 bucks for your entire order so that I can pay for the freight. I don't care how many you buy. I made an offer earlier today. If you buy 10 and you're in Switzerland, I will ship it all 10 there for just the $25. I won't ask you to, to throw in another $20 for freight. Okay, please put in whether you want the camo or whether you want regular or stainless, or I don't care how you how you say it, but some people are putting not camo. <laughs> now that doesn't mean they don't like camo. It just means that's one way to tell me what it is that you want. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I need to tell you about this? I think that's it. Oh, they're gonna, we've already started shipping. They started shipping last week. So now they'll be shipping every other day. We'll be shipping them around the country. So it will take almost no time to get these. Um, and then please, I'm going to put up three cards, three, all three shows yesterday were out of the park. They were all three huge, hugely successful. Um, and everybody, the comments were wonderful. So I'm going to put up all three cards actually right there, all three cards, um, check those out from yesterday. And then, uh, don't forget to watch tonight. And again, the Isaacson, Walter Isaacson, his book is coming out Tuesday. I'm going to read it as soon as it comes out. I'm going to read it from cover to cover. I'm going to take notes. I'm going to make decisions and I'm going to, I'm going to have programs. I want you to be absolutely the first to know if there's anything in there that's useful and helpful uh, and even entertaining. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be a lot of entertaining. What has broken so far has been <laughs> absolutely entertaining and in some cases, headline grabbing. So that's what I'm going to be doing Tuesday. I'll continue with the regular kinds of, of programming. I will still have my morning show that'll be news, news, news. I'll still have Wednesday afternoon that'll be news. Friday night will be news. Saturday afternoon will be news. But there might be a lot of Walter Isaacson's bio in those other slots, okay? And right now, as you know, I'm doing three a day. Exhausting, isn't it? <laughs> for me, I meant not for you. Anyway, okay. That's all I got. It has been great talking to you. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.